Fridays. It feels so good to be back. Yo, what's up, world? Welcome back to the channel, APW Sports, signing in. And welcome back to another episode of Chicago Bears Weekly, Season 6, Episode 6 of Chicago Bears Weekly. Now, we all know that the Bears traded this year's number one overall pick to the Carolina Panthers for a couple of picks and wide receiver DJ Moore. Now, that was a very good trade looking at it now. And it had me thinking a little bit in reverse. What were some of the worst trades that the Chicago Bears have ever made in the history of their franchise. We're gonna go over the five worst trades that the Chicago Bears have ever made in the history of their franchise. So before I get into those worst trades, make sure you guys leave this video a like as it continues to help this channel to grow. And if you are a first time viewer and you enjoy content like this, make sure you click the sub button and notification bell so you will not miss any of the videos that I post, but let's get into these worst trades. Without further ado, let's dive into it. The number five worst trade in Chicago Bears history was when they traded for Mike Phipps after the 1976 season. Now, back in the 60s, Mike Phipps became a legend at the University of Purdue. He would cement himself as one of the best quarterbacks in Boilermaker history. He was one of those guys to establish himself as a real true dual threat quarterback back in the 1960s. Now, as we know, back in the 60s, the running game was extremely prevalent and Mike Phipps really stood out as a dual threat quarterback can not only throw the ball, but also run the football as well. His draft stop ended up going so high that Phipps became the third overall pick in the 1970 draft to the Cleveland Browns. Now to say that Phipps did not live up to his draft stock will be an absolute understatement. With his best season coming in 1972, his third year in the league, when the Browns went 10 and three, he threw for 1,994 yards, 13 TDs, but he also threw for 16 interceptions. After the 1976 season, Bears ended up acquiring Mike Phipps for a first round pick and a fourth round pick. Phipps was going to play a total of five seasons as the Chicago Bears quarterback with his best season coming in 1979. When the Bears went 9-1 in his starts, he threw for 1,535 yards, nine TDs, and eight interceptions. And Phipps would go on to play for five seasons and he threw for a combined 2,806 yards, 15 TDs, and 27 interceptions, and 20 starts in those five years as a Bear. But to summarize this trade, the Bears traded up pick to the Cleveland Browns, and who did that pick ended up being? The Browns used that first round pick to ultimately draft future Hall of Fame tight end, Ozzie Newsome. Now to say that was a bad trade for the Bears, that would be an absolute understatement. To get a quarterback who ended up just becoming another lame in a long list of Chicago Bears quarterback, when you could have had a Hall of Fame tight end and Ozzie Newsome, Lap would absolutely say that that was an absolute bad trade. Speaking of quarterback, the fourth worst trade in Chicago Bears history was when they traded their 1997 number 11 overall pick for quarterback Rick Myra, who went down as one of the worst quarterbacks to ever play for the Bears and went down in another long name of bad moves for the Bears at the quarterback position. The Bears traded for the former number two overall pick in the 1993 NFL Draft by the Seattle Seahawks. After four bad years with the Seattle Seahawks, which seen his best season come actually in his rookie year when he threw for 2,833 yards, 12 TDs, but 17 interceptions, and the Seahawks had a 6-10 and 10 record. After the 96 season, the Bears ended up trading their number 11 overall pick for Rick Myra, who would end up signing a three-year deal with the Bears worth over $11 million. However, the Bears only saw one season with Rick Meyer as the quarterback. He started three games, losing all three of them, not throwing a single touchdown pass 
with the Bears and six interceptions. One would thought they could have seen this coming after Rick Meyer ended up throwing 41 touchdowns and 56 interceptions with his four seasons with the Seattle Seahawks. To say that he did not hold up his draft stock would be absolutely a huge understatement but the Bears still went after Rick Meyer in the 1997 offseason and the first round pick that the Bears traded for Rick Meyer ended up turning out to be former Ohio State standout corner Sean Springs who went out to have a very good career with the Seattle Seahawks so to say that the Bears quarterback trades have been bad so far in this list it has been very bad to absolutely say the least the number three trade on the list is when the Bears traded Greg Olson to the Carolina Panthers after the 2010 season now back in the 2007 NFL draft and this was after the 2006 Super Bowl appearing season for the Bears. The Bears ended up selecting Greg Olson 31st overall in the draft out of the University of Miami. Olson was known for being a speedster at the tight end position who was more like a wide receiver in a tight end's body. Overall, the Bears selected Greg Olson thinking he was going to be a very good fit for them. But after four years in Chicago, which ended up seeing Greg Olson catch 194 passes, for 1,981 yards and 20 touchdowns, the Bears ended up trading him to the Carolina Panthers because he was not a fit within the then offensive coordinator Mike Martz's offense. So the Bears ended up trading Olsen to the Carolina Panthers for a third round pick. And the funny part about this entire ordeal, Olsen was at the time the best pass catcher on the Chicago Bears roster. Now, this story goes on as he had a very productive career with the Carolina Panthers, which seen him make three straight pro bowls from the 2014 to 2016 seasons, and including a 2015 appearing with the Carolina Panthers in the Super Bowl, and he was the favorite target of Cam Newton during those years with the Carolina Panthers. So to say that Mike Martz and the Chicago Bears screwed this trade up at the time, and even my memory of the trade at the time, it was a very dumb trade because Greg Olson was a very integral part in the Bears offense, and he wasn't a very good blocker, which was required a little bit from the tight end position in Mike Martz's offense, which ended up sending him to the Carolina Panthers. So you're looking back at this trade, and you look at the career that Greg Olson was ultimately able to have with the Carolina Panthers, it looks a very big dumb for the Chicago Bears to trade Greg Olson at that time. Now, I know you guys were looking for this trade to be on this list, and here it is at number two, is when the Bears moved up one spot in a 2017 NFL draft to select quarterback Mitchell Trubisky out of the University of North Carolina. Now, I have a full video of why his entire Bears career did not go as planned, and I will leave that in the cards above and as well as in the description below. But the terms of the trade is that the Bears ended up giving the 49ers two third round picks and a fourth rounder to move up one spot to select Mitchell Trubisky. And hindsight makes this trade worse than what it was at the time, even though my memory of it at the time was still not a very good trade. And the reason why this trade ended up not being as good is number one, his Bears career did not work out like we thought it would. And number two, there were two very successful quarterbacks that were taken behind him. Deshaun Watson was taken by the Houston Texans and Patrick Mahomes, the reigning MVP and the reigning Super Bowl MVP was taken by the Kansas City Chiefs. Now his career as the Chicago Bears had a lot of ups and downs, but like I said, I would not get into it. I have a video on the cards and a video description. but. His best season came in 2018 when the Chicago Bears went 12-4 and, and he made the Pro Bowl as an alternate where he threw for 3,223 yards, 24 TDs, and 12 interceptions. 2019 still saw him throw for over 3,000 yards, 17 TDs, and 10 interceptions, but in 2020 he was ultimately benched at Week 3 versus the Atlanta Falcons for Nick Foles. And the whole season, he ended up throwing for 2,055 yards, 16 TDs, and 8 interceptions. And he was ultimately let go by the Chicago Bears after the 2020 season. His career with the Bears never quite panned out. Looking back at it, the trade was absolutely bad because of the quarterbacks in Watson and Mahomes that were taken behind Trubisky. So, so say that he had some ups and downs, but ultimately, it looked like the worst trade that we could have ever made at the time but 
Surprisingly, it is not the worst trade in the history of the Chicago Bears. The worst trade in Chicago Bears history was the 1967 offseason trade of tight end Mike Dicka. No, not the head coach Mike Dicka, not this one. The football player, the tight end, Mike Dicka. Now, back in 1961, the Bears ended up selecting Mike Dicka with the number eight overall pick. Dicka would go on to start his career with five straight Pro Bowl appearances and two All-Pro nods in 1963 and 1964. His actual best statistical season came in his rookie year in 1961, where he had 56 catches for over 1,000 yards with 1,076 yards and 12 touchdown receptions. Now, over his first five seasons with the Bears, Dicker ended up catching 316 passes for 4,503 yards and 34 touchdowns. And at this point, it seemed like Dicker was a legend in the making and one of the prototype tight ends at that time and one of the better tight ends to ever play in the NFL. But after a down year in 1966, which only seen him catch 32 passes, for 378 yards and two TDs, the Bears ended up trading Mike Dicker to the Philadelphia Eagles for yet another quarterback, Jack Cone Cannon, and an undisclosed draft pick. Now, Dicker will go on to have a solid career for the rest of his career, including catching a touchdown in Super Bowl VI, while Jack Cone Cannon, on the other hand, well, he ended up becoming just another name and a bad starting quarterback list for the Bears. He spent the 1967 and 1971 seasons with the Bears with his best year coming in 1970 when he threw for 2,130 yards, 16 TDs, and 18 interceptions. And in his five seasons with the Bears, Con Cannon threw for 31 touchdown passes to his 52 interceptions while starting a total of 40 games with the Bears. So to say that you gave up a Hall of Fame type tight end, for a quarterback who really didn't do too much in his career with his record standing at 17 and 22 and one as the Bears starting quarterback, he just went down in another long list of the quarterbacks of the Chicago Bears that absolutely became failures and Dicker ended up becoming a Hall of Fame tight end. So this was ultimately the worst trade in Chicago Bears history that is going to conclude this week's episode of chicago bears weekly make sure you guys leave this video a like comment you guys thoughts down below was there any trade that i possibly missed that the bears ever made that was bad leave your thoughts in the comments down below and as always click the sub button and notification bell so you will not miss any other videos that i post but this is apw sports signing out make sure you guys stay safe out there have a great and excellent day and i will see you guys in the next video peace